Congratulations, you bought your brand new AMD Zen 4 processor. Perhaps this Ryzen 7 7700X for just over £300, or the Ryzen 7 3D for about £350, or the full fat Ryzen 9 16 core 7950X for about £550. But which motherboard would logically go with your new processor? I've got three AMD motherboards here from MSI, which will show you a huge range of options and prices. And clearly the thinking that applies to MSI will also apply to other brands, such as ASRock, ASUS, and Gigabyte. At the bottom end of the scale, the Mag B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi sells for a mere 180 pounds. Moving up, the MSI MPGX 670E Carbon Wi-Fi, and that's a bit of a mouthful, sells for £430. And then we have the mighty Meg X670E Ace, which sells for a somewhat terrifying £740. So essentially X, 2X and 3X, and yet all three of these motherboards will support the same processor. What is that all about? Before we dive into the details that explain why these three motherboards are priced so differently, I want to make a broader point about PC building. I'm not going to be arguing here about whether or not you should plug your Ryzen 9 into a relatively basic motherboard, or indeed whether you should plug a Ryzen 5 into an expensive motherboard. Instead, think more holistically about your entire PC. This power supply from MSI, for example, the Meg AI 1300P, retails for just over £300. You'll also need a cooler for your processor. Many of us prefer AIO coolers rather than air, but there are, of course, many options on the market. And this Magcore Liquid E360 from MSI retails for just over £100. But of course, the elephant in the room is the graphics card. This MSI RTX 4080 Gaming Trio X sells for about £1,200. And that, of course, makes it far and away the most expensive component in your PC. And in addition, you'll need suitable DDR5 memory and SSD storage. This Trident Z Neo from G-Skill supports AMD Expo. And this T700 from Crucial is a Gen 5 SSD. Add together those components and you're potentially spending thousands on a gaming PC. Or of course you might be spending far less money on a more basic PC. And that takes us back to the features of the motherboard, which forms the backbone of your PC and pretty much dictates its capabilities. So let's take a look at the 180 pounds Mag B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, an ATX motherboard, and as the name suggests, powered by a B650 chipset. So this motherboard supports PCI Express Gen 4, both for graphics and for storage. In the box, we have but a few basic accessories, some paperwork, some identity tags, M.2 screw, Wi-Fi antenna, a couple of SATA cables, and more M.2 screws. And then we have the motherboard. We have a fixed IO shield, which is becoming quite a common feature these days. We can see the Wi-Fi connection points. The board is neatly styled, primarily black, and we can see the metal reinforcement around the graphics slot. The four memory slots support DDR5 memory up to 7600 mega transfers. The primary graphics slot is PCI Express Gen 4 times 16. The secondary slot is Gen 4 times 2, and the bottom slot is Gen 3 times 1. We have three M.2 slots, two under heat shields, one exposed, and those M.2s are all Gen 4. The pricing of this motherboard at £180 is a step above entry level, and the VRMs reflect that. We have 14 by 80 amps, plus 2 plus 1, and we have reasonable sized heat sinks, which are two separate units as we can see extruded aluminium. On the back of the board, as you can see, there's no back plate and the PCB is six layer. So the form and the features are pretty much exactly what we'd expect to see. On the rear IO panel, we have one USB-C rated at 20 gigabits per second and three type A's rated at 10 gigabits per second plus one internal Type-C rated at 10 gigabits per second. We have an internal header for two USB 3 Type-A rated at 5 gigabits per second, with four ports on the rear I.O. There are internal headers for four USB 2s and two USB 2s on the rear I.O. The Ethernet is 2.5 gigabit and the wireless is Wi-Fi 6E. 
There are eight PWM fan connectors and we have two 12 volt RGB headers and two ARGB headers. In other words, the specification looks absolutely sound and on the face of it, this motherboard represents good value for money. That was the Mag B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi and now we step up to the MPG X670E Carbon Wi-Fi. The price jump is significant. We're going from £180 to £430, more than double the price. And what do you get for the money? In terms of accessories, not a lot extra. We now get some RGB extension cables and there's also somewhere here, there, a USB flash drive with drivers on it. By eye, it's clear the Carbon Wi-Fi is a more sophisticated piece of hardware, but let's look first at the chipset X670E, not X670. So the B650 is PCI Express Gen 4. The X670 is a peculiar hybrid. It supports Gen 4 for the graphics, but Gen 5 for M.2 storage. The X670E is Gen 5, both for M.2 and also for graphics. And in fact, the chipset is incorrectly named, it is chipsets. When it comes to the specification, pretty much everything improves with the carbon Wi-Fi, starting with the VRMs. So if we look back at that Mag B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, it's got 14 times 80 amps plus two plus one with relatively basic coolers. The X670E carbon Wi-Fi is 16 times 80 plus two plus one, and it has an extended heat sink that's linked with a heat pipe. We don't have a back plate, but we do have plenty of thermal armor for those M.2 slots and around the PCI Express expansion slots. We have two PCI Express Gen 5 times 16. That bottom slot is Gen 4 times 16. We have two Gen 5 M.2 slots and two Gen 4 M.2s. All of those M.2s are covered with heat sinks. The memory support steps up slightly from the Tomahawk Wi-Fi. We now have support for DDR5 7800. And while the form factor remains ATX rather than EATX, it's an eight layer PCB rather than six layers. And then we have the rear IO panel. We have one USB-C rated at 20 gigabits per second, one USB-C rated at 10 gigabits per second, six USB-A's rated at 10 gigabits per second, and an internal USB-C also rated at 10 gigabits per second. We have internal headers for four USB-A's rated at five gigabits per second. On the rear panel, we have two USB-2's and we have internal headers for a further four USB 2s. The ethernet is two and a half gigabit and the wireless is Wi-Fi 6E. And now we come to the big question. If the carbon Wi-Fi looks a bit expensive at 430 pounds, what do we think of the Meg X670E Ace? With its price tag of 740 pounds, what does it bring to the party that's worth an extra 300 pounds? Clearly, we're in the realms of diminishing returns, but MSI, to give them credit, has tried hard. So for one thing, you get a decent number of accessories essentially a bunch of cables, extensions, sensors, that kind of thing. And you also get this, which is an M.2 expander card, as you can see, PCI Express and actively cooled. And as you can see by looking at the mounting screw holes on the back of the PCB, it supports two M.2s. So four native drives plus two. This motherboard supports six M.2s. Let's start with an appreciation of this EATX motherboard, which does look remarkably smart. Black with gold and some metal reinforcement around the expansion slots. It's big and it's also heavy, and that's down to the copper used throughout the board and the cooling system. Let's start with the VRMs. Under the heat sinks, which are described as stacked thin array heat sinks linked with a heat pipe, we have Infineon hardware, 22 by 90 amps of digital stages, plus two plus one, and you won't be surprised to learn that under this back plate, we have doublers to support all those stages. The ACE supports up to DDR5-8000. The three expansion slots, we have a primary graphics, which is PCI Express Gen 5 by 16. The secondary is Gen 5 by 8. And the third is Gen 5 by 4. As mentioned, we have a total of six M.2s, four on board and two on the expander card. The three on the motherboard, 
the primary is Gen 5, and then three are Gen 4, and they all have cooling hardware. The board is covered with extra pieces of hardware. So for example, we have a secondary power connector next to the 24 pin to feed extra juice to the motherboard. We have a debug display next to the power connector. We have micro buttons at the foot of the board, and basically everywhere you look, you find headers and connectors. And if we look at the rear I.O. panel, we have a load of connectors. We also have a set of micro buttons. The rear I.O. is fully loaded. We have two type C's on the panel, which are rated at 20 gigabits per second. And we have an internal type C also rated at 20 gigabits per second. We have eight type A's rated at 10 gigabits per second on the rear I.O. along with a type C rated at 10 gigabits per second. And there's also an internal type C rated at 10 gigabits per second. If you need more expansion, we have four internal USB type A's rated at five gigabits per second and four headers for USB 2. The ethernet is 10 gigabit and we have Wi-Fi 6E. The motherboard uses an eight layer PCB construction. We have two ARGB headers, one old school 12 volt lighting connector and we have eight PWM headers. The idea quite clearly is that MSI is packing in every feature you could possibly want for your new Zen 4 processor and I wouldn't be the least bit shocked to learn this board will later support Zen 5 absolutely to the hilt. Of course, we want to see the motherboards in action. So we install the MSI Meg AI 1300P power supply in our test bench, put the motherboard assembly in place, install the MSI RTX 4080 Gaming X Trio graphics card, apply some MSI thermal compound to the Ryzen 9 7950X, and then we install the MSI Mag Core Liquid E360 cooler. And here we have the MAG B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi running Cinebench R23. The Ryzen 9 7950X is drawing 157 watts and the system is pulling 295 watts. The processor is running at an average of 4.55 gigahertz. And while the CPU is pegged at the standard 95 degrees Celsius, at an ambient of 20 degrees C, the VRMs are running at 60 degrees. And the final score creeps just above 34,000 points. In the Speedway graphics test, we see the MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 4080 running at a clock speed of 2.7 GHz, and the final score in Speedway is 7300. And we move on from the MAG B650 Tomahawk Wi Fi to the MPG X670E Carbon Wi Fi. On the X670E Carbon Wi Fi, our CPU is now drawing 207 watts and running at 4.95 GHz, so considerably faster than the B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. System power has also increased from 295 watts to 350 watts. Once again, the CPU is running at 95 degrees Celsius with an ambient of 20. The VRMs are very cool at 52 degrees. And we finish Cinebench R23 with a very healthy score, just under 37,000. In the Speedway graphics test, our MSI RTX 4080 graphics card once again runs at a core speed of 2.7 GHz. The slightly increased CPU speed doesn't help in this graphics test, and as a result we see a final score that's identical to that achieved by the MAG B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. And the third motherboard on our test bench is the 740-pound MEG X670E Ace. So let's see what that's made of in Cinebench R23. The MEG X670E ACE acts in a very similar way to the X670E Carbon Wi-Fi. It supplies the CPU 210 watts of power, the system's drawing 370 watts. Clock speed 4.96 GHz on average. The ambience crept up from 20 degrees to 21 degrees C, the CPU is running at 95 Celsius, and the VRMs once again are running at 52 degrees. And the result is that the Cinebench R23 score is fractionally higher, just over 37,000. For our final test, we run Speedway on the Meg X670E Ace, and the score is exactly in line with the other two boards at 7,279. And so we come to the wrap up. What have we learned by looking at this small stack of three MSI AMD motherboards? For starters, the MAG B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. It does a perfectly decent job, but of course it restricts you to PCI Express Gen 4. Today that's not such a problem, but when the next generation of inevitably PCI Express Gen 5 graphics rolls around, then it might become an issue. If you're considering a processor that's something less than Ryzen 9, say a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 5, 
I think this motherboard or something like it will do you absolutely fine. Moving up to the MPGX670E Carbon Wi-Fi. As I mentioned previously, a lot of the features of this board are down to the chipset, but it has also been stacked out with tons of USB. The thing is, it does throw you the odd conundrum. Which exactly of the USB-Cs do I want to use for maximum performance? After all, all USB-Cs look the same, and yet they don't all behave the same. Clearly, if you can read the user manual, this will not cause you a major drama. If you're considering a Ryzen 9 rather than a Ryzen 7, you need a higher quality motherboard with a more serious VRM. And that is where a motherboard such as the MPGX670E Carbon Wi-Fi comes into its own. And then we come to the Meg X670E Ace, priced at £740, which means it's more expensive than the processor that's going in the CPU socket. And that just feels kind of peculiar. On the other hand, loads of PCI Express Gen 5, supports any memory you fancy installing, loads of options for storage. And of course, it's as future-proof as motherboards tend to get. The VRMs on this board are absolutely stellar. The only way I can make sense, however, in my own mind of spending over £700 on a motherboard these days is by thinking, yes, and then you're adding an RTX 4090 graphics card. Even this RTX 4080 is £1,200. 4090s are even more expensive as we know to our cost. In other words, if you're spending top money on every single one of your components, that is when you should be considering a motherboard such as the Meg X670E Ace. I will confess there was a point during this roundup and I started to go a bit cross-eyed looking at the various USB ports and PCI Express expansion slots, but we've got there. You've got my views and now it's over to you to make your final buying decision.